Please welcome Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Now it's a great reception. Uh, I feel like I could stand for the interview and it would be the same height. <laughs> <laughs> um, you are such a Renaissance man, uh, author, Hall of Famer, uh, athlete, uh, Presidential Medal of Freedom winner. It, it's almost like NBA all-time leading scorer is number six on your resume. <laughs> you have lived quite an accomplished life. Are you, are you just trying to win LinkedIn? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> No, I, I, you know, I'm just, uh, I go through life and I, I try to find interesting and meaningful things to do. Um, you know, you, you go through your whole life and you have a career that's over when you're 42. I'm, right. I'm 70 now. You know, what, what do you do with the rest of your life? So uh, I'm, I'm glad I figured out uh, how to write a few books and say a few things that uh, people might want to hear and uh, something that we could share. You, you definitely say a few things that people want to hear. I mean, this, this book is, is, uh, is a beautiful book because it's you telling the story of your life. But what I like about it is you, you, you've set it out for younger readers, you know, so anyone from the age of 10 up can read it. And you truly have lived one of the more fascinating lives I have ever read about. Um, everyone knows you from the world of sports, but a lot of people don't know what it was like to be a sportsman during your time. You talk in the book about having to change or want, choosing to change your name to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Why was that important for you during the time that you did it? Uh, it was very important because uh, black Americans had a whole situation uh, imposed upon them. Uh, people were brought here from Africa, the names were changed, and they were forced into some very terrible, uh, terrible, uh, depri deprived uh, circumstances. Right. Uh, sl slavery was not, not a, a great experience, and uh, we came out of it very damaged. And in order to repair, uh, we have to reassert our identities. So. Uh, the fact that uh, I, I believed in Christianity and monotheism my whole life, uh, I, I decided I, I wanted to change my name to something that had to do with uh, the type of uh, monotheism that they practiced in Africa to right. some degree. And uh, I became interested in Islam and uh, became Muslim. But uh, th that was my thought process. It, it wasn't me taking a stance uh, against uh, America, but it was a, a, a position of for myself, right. uh, for my own identity that, that I wanted to assume, not something that was imposed on me. It's interesting that you say not something against America, but something for yourself, because it feels like that's a conversation that we're experiencing once again with Colin Kaepernick. It's an the athlete, same conversation. It's an athlete in the spotlight saying, this is something that I'm trying to say for myself and for my people and what we're experiencing, and people are hearing it as, no, this is against America. When you said these things, and when you stood up for black Americans, was it similar to what people say today about NFL athletes taking the knee? It was the same exact thing. They wanted to change the subject because they didn't like to talk about the fact that uh, too many black Americans end up dead for no good reason at the hands of police. Right. And uh, they didn't want to talk about that issue because it's troubling. Uh, it means that there's something wrong with our, with some of our police forces, mm -hmm. uh, the way they're trained, et cetera. So uh, m most people don't want to talk about that. That's a very uh, intense and uh, difficult problem to solve. But it's something we have to solve. A as a black American, we want it solved now because it's our kids that are being shot down in the street. And uh, that's very troublesome, and, and we want to change that. And uh, we got to keep fighting until people understand that and, and help us change it in a positive way. And you, 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 tr you truly are trying to do it in a positive way. You, you inspire people, you speak to them, you write columns about this. There are still people who are vehemently opposed to some of the things that you say. Yeah. Like, have, have you found that there's been a change? Have you found a way to break through to people in the time that, I mean, because you've been doing this for a very long time, as you said, your career ended, and then you go, where do you go from there? Have you found any breakthrough in any way? I, I found a lot of breakthroughs. Look at the... Uh, President Obama could not have been elected without that type of breakthrough, right. uh, without people being able to see him for his character and his, his positive attributes uh, and, and not being uh, upset about the color of his skin or that his, uh, his ancestry goes back to Africa. Right. That, that, that should not be an issue. It should be the content of his character and what he wants to do for America. 
Uh, so, you know, we, we, we get that mentality and we get that idea out to people. Um, maybe, maybe they can see that uh, black Americans are actually their fellow citizens. And right. uh, we want the same thing that they want. You, you've lived through many of the most painful periods in American history for black Americans. And for Americans, I would argue. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this about you, but when you were 10 years old, Emmett Till was 10 years old. He was 13. He was 13. So yes. when you were a young boy, Emmett Till was basically around the same age. Right. You were experiencing America in a similar way that he was. You, you get older and you got an opportunity, you had an opportunity to uh, interview Martin Luther King, I believe it was, for yes. a, a journalist experience. And, and then you were around when Martin Luther King was assassinated. Yes, I was. How do you prevent yourself from only being angry, from only seeing the world as against you when you've experienced so many traumas as an African-American? Well, we also have to look at the, the good side of things. Uh, and a whole lot of good things have happened. The Voting Rights Act, uh, the Civil Rights Act, uh, the fact that people are starting to understand how corrosive and horrible uh, white supremacy can be on people who are not white. Right. Um, they don't get it all the time. They think uh, everything is fine for everybody. Uh, when we can point out in uh, very valid and uh, explicit ways how that's not working and uh, we have to make this a democracy that works for everyone, um, people get that because everybody wants to be treated fairly. Right. And, uh, you know, black Americans are no different. And um, if, if white Americans can uh, see a way to understand that, we're going to make a lot of progress in, in a short period of time. Uh, th there is one white American who may struggle with some of these concepts. <laughs> and it, it's, it's interesting because, yeah. because you, you wrote uh, an op-ed uh, in and around Donald Trump uh, comparing him to Bernie Sanders, explaining the differences and trying to show how different their world's views were. And uh, the president then wrote you a personal letter on your own Column. I think we have we have the picture here. What he wrote. And I think, yeah, there it yeah, is. Yeah, it reads there. It's uh, dear Kareem. Now I know why the press always treated you so badly. They couldn't stand you. The fact is that you don't have a clue about life and what has to be done to make America great again. Best wishes, Donald Trump. <laughs> what do you do with a personal note like that from the president? Do you, do you frame it or do you burn it? Uh, <laughs> actually, that uh, when I got that, I, I crumpled it up in a ball and I sky hooked it into a wastebasket. <laughs> It's, it's very difficult dealing with somebody that you shouldn't have to take seriously, but um, unfortunately, right. we're stuck. You right. Know? So here we are. Um, sportsmen, celebrities, people in positions of power uh, and politics. When, when you look at your world as a sportsman, many people said to you at the time, they said, you are an athlete. I support you because of how you play. Don't, don't say these things because it alienates me from you. Why don't you just play the game? How did you ever respond to people who had that as their rhetoric? Well, you know, I, I think that's great. You know, I've run into lots of people that have bet on the Lakers and won a lot of money, and they're very happy to see me for that reason. Uh, but they, sometimes they don't want me to remind them that, uh, you know, innocent kids get, get shot down in the street for no good reason. Right. That, that's, that's two difficult things to, to, to balance, but that's what we are dealing with here in America. And we have to find some way to talk about uh, one while we enjoy the other, because uh, you know, if, if things don't change, it, it's going to be just more misery for for people of color, and uh, we've we've got to stop that. I've I've noticed a few times, even in this conversation, and I feel it in the book as well. You have a very nuanced view of the world. You see the truths, but at the same time, you appreciate the progress. You feel the pain, but there are moments of pleasure that you that you experience and you share. Is this your philosophy on life? Is this how you see the world? Is that a conscious decision you've made? Yeah, it is, because uh, we, I can't give in to pessimism. You know, I have to uh, think that uh, this is America, and we do things differently here, and we can get things done here. And uh, the fact that my fellow Americans will listen to me and maybe uh, be guided by some of the things that I say, that I, I find that uh, very reassuring. It, it might not happen right away, but uh, they'll listen. And uh, once the dialogue starts, that's how change begins. You are going to be engaging in the dialogue. I, I, I believe that you're going to be going on a, a tour 
which is a live show basically speaking about what's in the book and engaging with everyday Americans. Why was that important to you? You could write the book and just have people read it. Why do you want to go around America talking to the people who you'd like to read the book? Well, I'd, I'd like to explain exactly what happened. Uh, in, in the book, I talk about my mentors and what I learned from them. And it wasn't always positive things. Sometimes uh, people that I admired uh, did things that uh, made me step back a little bit. Right. But uh, I, I learned how to make choices, and I learned how to listen and uh, sift through different uh, information that was given to me by people who were trying to mentor me and, and decide, you know, what I should deal with and what I shouldn't. You know, so it, it's a cautionary tale. Uh, you know, it, it's very easy to, to, to take bad advice and, and go off, off track and end up with your life as a mess. And right. I don't want that to happen to kids. So that, that's why I wrote this book. And uh, any kids that are out there that want to check it out, becomingkareem.com, you can see it and uh, find out. We'll be touring the United States. Uh, going to do a number of cities and, and, and talk about some of the issues and things that happened in the book. And if you have any advice for sportsmen that are out there today, sports people who are saying, Kareem, I have views. I want to share these views, but I'm afraid. I'm afraid of being cut off. I'm afraid of not getting money. I'm afraid of being blackballed out of the sports field that I want to be in. What, what would your advice be to them? I would have to tell them that they have to have the courage to stand up for something that is important to them. Um, yeah, you can... Uh, avoid uh, having to make that tough choice, but at a, at a certain point, th there's no place to hide. You either have to stand up for what's right or go along with the program that, uh, that diminishes you. And uh, as a black American, I, I can't go along with a program that diminishes me. I, I have to stand up for what's right. So uh, I'm, I'm encouraging kids and all young people that, that read this to, to stand up for what they believe in and uh, what they see uh, that they can do to make America a better place. You know what, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, I think the president's wrong. I think you're going to make a good man of yourself. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I think you have a bright future. Thank you. thank you so much for being on the show. Becoming Kareem is available now. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, everybody.